All right, here I am, ready to work on lesson three of module nine. We are just practicing our multiplying with fractions and mixed numbers. So let me share my screen with you as always. Move myself out of the way. All right. So, oh. okay, sorry, that was pain in my leg going on. All right, so the starts off with a mattress measures six and one fourth feet by three and one fourth feet, one fourth feet. What is the area of the top of the mattress? So our equation using fractions greater than one. I knew I'd have some help. All right. So we're going to use, if we're doing area, we know that formula is length times width. So it wants me right away, or it wants us right away to use those improper fractions. So six and one fourth, I would do four times six plus one would be 25 fourths times four times three is 12 plus one is 13 fourths and there's our equation. Nice and easy. Let's solve and rewrite that area using a mixed number. So I have to do, I'm gonna go to the side, 25 times 13. I can't do that in my head. I'm gonna do the work over here and get an answer of 325. I can do four times four in my head, 16, 325 sixteenths. So once I do that, I'm going to rename that, rewrite it as a mixed number. So when I do that, let's see, 325 sixteenths is 325 divided by 16. 16 cannot go into three. 16 can go into 32, how many times? Two times. Two times, I'll subtract. I bring down the five, can 16 go into five? No, because I brought down a digit, I have to put a digit in my quotient and then I can find my answer. I have a whole 20 and the fraction part, the remainder is the numerator, the divisor is the denominator. So we would have 20 and 5 sixteenths. And because we're talking about area, we're going to put square feet. And there's our answer there. Now, it says the top of the second mattress has one and a half times as much area as the first mattress. What is the area of the top of the second mattress? So what would our equation be? We're looking at, we need one and one half of 20 and five sixteenths. You wanna do it on the board? You could. One and one half of. So this would be the correct order for the situation. And then when I do that work, of course, again, I'm gonna go over here. We have to rename one and one half. We have one and one half times 20 and five sixteenths. Let's rename the one and one half. That's three halves times, oh, 20 and five sixteenths. Oh, that makes my brain hurt. Oh, maybe not. 16 times 20. I can do 16 times two, right? That's 32. Add that zero on the end, 320 plus five, 325 sixteenths. So again, I did 16 times two in my head was 32. And then I added that zero back to it, 320 plus five. So now we have three times 325. 325 times three, I'll write it. And we get 
2 times 16? Uh, 30, 30 seconds, yep. So I'm going to get a sticky note here. I'm running out of room. They never seem to give us enough room on these pages. So I'm going to do 975 divided by 32. That's what that fraction says, 975 30 seconds. So 32 does not go into 9. 32 can go into 97. That would be 64. I think I could go 3. Let's do 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. Oh, look how close we got. I did a big old minus sign there. Subtract. We have 1 left. I'm going to bring down that 5. Can 32 go into 15? No. Because we brought down that digit, we have to put something up in our quotient. And then the remainder is the numerator. The divisor is the denominator. So we get 30 and 15, 30 seconds for this third part of number one, 15, 30 seconds. And we are doing area, so it's square feet. Did we know looking at this one and a half times great as much that our answer should be greater? Uh, yes. Yes, because? One and a half is greater than one. One and a half is greater than one. And so we knew our answer should be greater than 20 and 5 sixteenths. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. A pet shop has four fish tanks. Each tank holds eight and three eighths gallons. How many gallons do the four fish tanks hold? Write an equation to model the problem. So I've got four tanks. They each hold eight and three fourths gallons. What would our equation look like? Eight and three fourths gallons times four. Eight and three fourths gallons times four tanks. I don't mind that at all. Eight and three fourths times four. Could we do this one the distributive way? We talked about this in class. So there's my equation. I'm going to put equals n. It doesn't tell me to solve, but I'm going to go ahead and solve. In class, we talked about I have a whole four times eight plus three fourths. So this is eight and three fourths, just like this is eight and three fourths. So now distributive property, I'm gonna do four times eight equals 32 plus four times three fourths. What is four times three fourths? Four times three fourths. So it's a whole number for one then it. Yep. And then that will, so four times three equals 12. And then one times four equals four. Excellent. So, so that's improper. 32 plus, how many times does four go into 12? Three whole times. 32 plus three. Thirty-five gallons. There's our answer. Again, I'm running out of room. There's my answer down there in all my work. All right. So I like this next one for the distributive property as well because I see this whole number. I can do three times two is six, plus three times three sevenths would be nine sevenths. I'm going to do this. I'm going to move it over so I have more room. I should start farther out. Three times two was six. And since we have two and three sevenths, and is adding, three times three sevenths was nine sevenths. That would be six plus one and two sevenths, which would be seven and two sevenths. Excellent. I've got agreement. All right. I'm going to rename one and three fourths. Four times one is four plus three is seven fourths. So now I have four fifths times seven fourths. Four times seven? One, two, eight. Five times four? Uh, so that would give me one and eight twentieths. Good. 
All right, I need the Columbia C on both of these. Eight times two is 16 plus three is 19 eighths times four times two is eight plus one is nine halves. 19 times nine, if you need to stop and do this work, I'm gonna do it in my head a little bit. Nine times nine is 81. Nine times one plus eight would be 17. So I have 171 sixteenths. How many times can 16 go into 171? There's our fraction written as a dividing problem. 16 goes into 17 one time. Subtract, bring down. 16 does not go into 11. I put a zero in my quotient. So our answer would be 10 and 11 sixteenths. Thank you. Thank you for your agreement. Here I go renaming four and three eighths. Eight times four is 32 plus three is 35 eighths times. What do I get when I rename one and one half? Uh, three, halves. three halves. That's an easy one. All right. So we get 35 times three. 35 times three gives me 105 sixteenths. Again, you may need an extra little scratch paper for yourself. 105 divided by 16. That's what that fraction says. 16 does not go into one. It does not go into 10. It goes into 105. Mm, I'm going to guess six times. Six times six is 36. Six times one plus three is 90. We're going to subtract nine, 15. We should have nine left. So we have the remainder is the numerator. The divisor is the denominator. So our, oops, <laughs> there went my page. So sorry. I should tape that back down. There we go. That was a really sticky, sticky note. We get six and nine sixteenths right there. Here's one I love. I'll just rewrite this. Can I help me with this one? Because I have a whole number. Seven times five is? 35. And three ninths times five? So three times five is 15. Nine times one equals nine. There it is. Now I'm going to rename 15 ninths is how much? How many times can nine go into 15? Once. Once. How many left over? Six ninths. There it is. You got it. So our answer is 36 and six ninths. One more. Whew. Here we go. All right, let's see what happens here. I'm going to rename six and three fifths. Five times six is 30 plus three gives me 33 fifths times three fourths. That gives me 99 ninths. Ooh, that's a fun one. 99, hold on. Not five plus four, five times four. That would have been a challenge. 20 goes into 99 four whole times. Four times 20 is 80. I would then have 19 twentieths left over. All right, so lots of things happening on this page. I'm gonna go back and box all my answers so that you can see them easier maybe. There we go. All right, last one. Akifumi says that he can find one and a half times as much as 20 by finding the quotient of 20 and two and then adding 20 for a total of 30. Is he correct? Why or why not? Let's think about this. So he says he's going to find one and a half times as much. One and one half times as much as 20. He says 
He knows the quotient of 20 and 2. What's the quotient of 20 and 2? And then adding 20 to get 30. Why would he find the quotient of 20 and 2? Because um, multiply, what? Four, one, Exponents multiply, divide, add, subtract, or the population says, what? All right. So when we find the quotient of 20 and 2, he did 1 half times 20, didn't he? Isn't that? 20 divided by 2, which would equal 10. And then he says he's going to add 20. Where's that 20 coming from then? Uh, he just did 1 half times 20 to get that. So what else does he have to do? Uh, add that one. Oh. Well, we're going to do 1 times 20 because he says he's going to add 20. So when he adds those two, he gets 30. Is that correct? Yes. yes. He used the distributive property there, which we also did up above. So that's the way he talked through the distributive property. Good. All right. Test prep. Are you ready for the test? Yeah. You think so? All right. Prove it. Whoops. What did I do to my screen here? I made it too small. Sorry. Go away. I want this to go away. Nope. Oh my gosh. All right. Okay. I don't know how to fix this. Ah! <laughs> All right. I'm going to reshare this. I'm not sure why it's doing this to me. That little part won't go away. Let me reshare. I don't know what button I hit on accident. All right, that should go away. There it goes. Here we go. All right. Full screen. I'm back to it. Here we go. A rectangular sports court measures five and a half yards by seven and three fourths yards. What is the area? We know length times width. So five and one half times seven and three fourths. Rename five and one half would be good. Excellent. So my easy part is that denominator two times four is eight. 11 times 31, I'm gonna work up here just to make sure I do it correctly with my zero placeholder. I'm going to get 140. I got really close to my eight over here. I'm gonna erase that. So I have 140 eighths. Now, if I look, there are no improper fractions. So I need to simplify this. Eight does not go into one. It does not go into 14. Oh, yes, it does. I better write this out for myself. 8 does go into 14 one time. Subtract. 6. Bring down the 0. 8 goes into 60. Is that an idea? Seven times because that would be 56. And I have four left. Okay, so we have 17 and four eighths. Is that over here? No, not even close. Uh oh, something's not right. Because look at these answers 42, 35, 28, 12. Let's check our work. Five times two is 10, plus one is 11. Seven times four is 28. I think I did 11 times 13 instead of 11 times 31. Or I did it, it should be 141, right? If I did it right, maybe I didn't. I don't know what's happening. Because then I would bring down the one. I'm still only at 17 though. What's going on? 
That would still give me five eighths. That was a tiny little change. All right. The area of the sports court. I'm going to start over. Five and one half times seven and three fourths. None of my choices were there. What is happening? Two times five is 10 plus one, 11 halves. Four times seven is 28, 31 fourths. So we should have eighths for our denominator. If I recheck, maybe I'm getting my work too squished up here. If I check 11 times 31, 11 times 31, one times one is one, one times one is one, zero placeholder. Three times one is four, three times one is five, or oh, three times one is three, not one. 350, well, goodness, somebody would have really caught me in a challenge because that was some sloppy multiplying. All right, so now we have 350 eighths. So if we do 350 divided by eight, let's start again. Eight times what gets me close to 35? Eight times, can I say four? Yeah. Eight times four is 32. Subtract, bring down. Eight goes into 30, not four times, that's too much, three times. Eight times four is 24, subtract, and we have 43 and six eighths. Whoo, that's better. 43 and six eighths. I still don't have that answer on the page though. 42 and five eighths is close. Boy, I might just, I should just make this one a challenge. Somebody else can do it. I don't know where it's going wrong. I did everything right this time. 11 times 31, one, one, zero, three, three. <gasps> oh my gosh, how many times did I multiply this? And now I've got a different answer. Friends, wow, where is my brain with this multiplying? Look what I did last time. I was adding and multiplying and all kinds of things. 341. Wow. 341 eighths. Uh, you know, that is the best advice. And I say that. And what am I doing? I'm rushing. Yeah. So lesson learned. And I'm glad this is multiple choice because if I did not have these choices, I would have gone with that first answer and just Bing, bang, boom. That would have been it. So eight goes into 34, four times, 32, subtract, bring down. Eight goes into 21, two times, 16, five. Remainder is the numerator, the divisor is the denominator. 42 and five eighths. Let's see. Oh, thank goodness. Slow down, pay attention, take your time. All the things I say in class, and yet I did not do it. Well, I do it more than half the time. I did not do it this time. Shame, shame. I'm glad that we got to rework it that many times. You may have had that a long time ago. Thanks for hanging in there with me if you did. Lonnie is checking how close the bus stops are to where he is standing. One bus stop is two-fifths of a mile away, okay? A second bus stop is three times as far away. How far from where Lonnie is standing is the second bus stop. So if it is three times the stop that is two-fifths, is it closer or farther? You had it. It is farther. It's three times. So it's a whole number. Then you put a one under three over one times two over five is going to give us six fifths miles. Fingers crossed. Six fifths is improper. One and one fifth miles. Fingers crossed. <gasps> that one didn't take me nearly as long as that first one. Goodness. 
Which mixed number is equivalent to four times three and three fifths? Four times three and three fifths. I'm going to do this the distributive way. If you did the Columbia C, that's fine. If you renamed three and three fifths, four times three is 12 plus four times three fifths is 12 fifths. So that would be two and two fifths. So I should have 14 and two fifths. Oh, I've just done two in less time than it took me to do that first one. That's crazy. All right, now my brain is back ready to do math. <laughs> Halim has three and three fourths gallons of paint. He determines that he needs three times as much that amount for a project. How much paint does he need? Write an equation to model the problem. He needs three times the three and three fourths he has. Three times three. Well, I just bragged about having my math ring. Three and three fourths equals. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do the distributive way again. Three times three is nine. Plus, there's my invisible and. Three times three fourths would be nine fourths. That would be nine plus two and one fourth, which would be 11 and one fourth gallons. I hope there's no multiple choice for this one. I'm going to hope that my brain is working. So that was 11 and one fourth gallons. All right. Last one for the test prep and then some spiral review. While training for a 10 kilometer race, Tracy ran eight and two thirds miles in three days. Her twin sister, Tamara, ran one and a half times as much as Tracy in the same three days. How many miles did Tamara run in three days? You're gonna write the equation. So Tracy, eight and two thirds miles. Tamara, one and a half times as much. Is that farther or less or about the same? Eight and two thirds, and Tamara ran one and a half times as much. Uh, she ran more. Tamara ran more. Tamara ran one and one half of eight and two thirds. So because one and one half is greater than one, we know our answer is going to be greater than what we're multiplying by. I'm going to do the Columbia C here. One and one half is three halves times three times eight is plus two. There it is. All right. 26 times three. I have 78 sixths. When I do that work, 78, I don't know, all my little scratch papers over here. I might as well get one more. Oh, I think I might have room. <laughs> 78 divided by six. Six goes into seven. One time, subtract, I have one left, bring down the eight, six goes into 18, three times, subtract, I'm left with zero, that means Tamara, how much did she run in miles in the three days? She ran 13 miles, Ooh, that's some good running. Remember, if we do the dividing work and we end with zero, that means we have zero six in this case. We don't write that fraction. Zero six is zero. We just write that whole number amount. I don't, I can't even run one mile. Mm, you have to train like they are. They're training for a race. All right, compare the expressions. 24, I'm sorry, 23 plus 47 and three times 23 plus 47. We've done this before. If I compare those, we would say three times 23 plus 47 is three times as much as 23 plus 47. Does anybody remember doing that? We could say it's three times as great, maybe would be another way you would say that. I like that word better because great is a math word, greater than, less than. 
three times the sum of 23 and 47 is three times as great as 23 plus 47. And it's just as easy as comparing. They both have 23 plus 47, but here we have three times. Oh, where would the parentheses go? We want it to equal 18. Hmm. I always just start at the front. If I put parentheses here, I have six times seven, that's 42 minus three, that's way more than 18, that's no good. If I put the parentheses here, four times seven is 28, two plus 28 is 30 minus three, nope, too much. If I go to the end, seven minus three is four, four times four plus two in front of that, 16 plus two, there it is. Our parentheses have to go around seven minus three. Nice. All right. Other than this first one on the test prep that I had such a hard time with, I don't think that was so bad. So hopefully you did well on that. And if you have any questions, you should bring them to class. All right. I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.